welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at the Linux distro OpenSUSE. I first tried out this operating system in the Raspberry Pi 64-bit operating system group test a few videos back, and I was so impressed that I thought I should give OpenSUSE a full review running on a standard x86 PC. Right, here we are on the OpenSUSE website, and the distro has a reputation for stability, reliability, and ease of installation and configuration. And the latter are handled via a tool called YAST, or yet another setup tool, as we'll shortly discover. And if we look at this wiki page for OpenSUSE over here, you'll also see that the distro claims to be amongst the easiest distributions for new users, although the focus is not absolutely on ease of use, the main focus is on offering users flexibility and choice. So, if we go back to the main homepage, you'll see there's two versions of an OpenSUSE we could install. The aptly named Tumbleweed, which is a rolling distribution. I do love that name for the rolling distribution. And this is what you should pick if you always want to have the very latest version of all the packages available. However, for most users, I would go for Leap, which is a point upgrade system. It gets periodic upgrades. And so this is better for general stable use. And so let's go to Install Leap, where we discover there's lots of options. You can create full installation media, you can create live media, etc. as you can see. And uh, I've already downloaded the uh, DVD image for the full installation for an x86 PC, which is a 3.99 gigabytes, as you can see. And uh, I've also run up Belena Etcher, which you can obtain from belena.io forward slash etcher, which I'm going to use to create our installation media. And uh, as you can see, I've already selected the uh, OpenSUSE image there to uh, be the image we're going to write to a USB drive, which I've inserted here. So if I click on Flash, we'll create our uh, installation media. Next, we need to plug our boot USB drive into the PC we're installing OpenSUSE on like uh, that. And uh, as you can see here, I'm installing on an Odyssey X86 J4105. And as an aside, you might be interested to know you can now buy the Odyssey x86 J4105 in a bundle with this uh, lovely blue aluminium case. And they call it, when you buy it that way, the Odyssey Blue J4105. Anyway, let's now power up to install OpenSUSE like uh, that. And we can now hopefully head into a very straightforward installation procedure. So uh, I'll just select uh, Installation. So we'll just select next here on the network installation. I'm going to take defaults most of the way through here. Bit of back and forth there, but it's now saying do we want to activate our online repository? So I'll go yes. And we'll take the defaults. As is so often the case in an installer, you've got lots of flexibility unless you want to change the size of the fonts you're using, in which case you have to stick with the very small fonts we have here. So apologies for that. We now get to a screen called a system role, which is rather interesting because it gives us lots of choices of desktops. We could go for the KDE Plasma desktop. In fact, I'm going to go for the KDE Plasma desktop, but we could also go for a GNOME desktop, as you can see there, or you can select generic desktop. And if you select generic desktop, later in the install, you can select from Enlightenment, LXDE, LXQT, Mate, and XFCE. So in effect, we have a choice of seven desktops in this installation process. That's an awful lot of user choice. Anyway, let's now click on Next with the KDE Plasma. We now get to the screen dealing with partitioning, where again, I'll take the default. We're installing here on a WD Black NVMe drive. Oh, a map of the world. I have to pick where we are, which is going to be Europe and we will go for United Kingdom. We now need to create a username. My full name is going to be a EC. My username will also be EC. I'll put a password in. There we are. And uh, next again. And uh, as far as I can see, everything here is OK. Again, we'll take the defaults and click on the Install. And uh, it really checks again. Do we really want to install? Yes, we want to install. We'll click on Install. Whoa, what a lot of downloading went on there. But as you can see, the installation is now finished and we need to reboot. And 
here we are booting into OpenSUSE. And doesn't it look exciting? And so here we are arriving on the KDE Plasma desktop in OpenSUSE. Greetings, here I am back again and it's now the next day. So I've had a bit of a chance to experiment with OpenSUSE and I've also, as always in my videos, changed the font settings in this system and some other display settings so things read better on video. So for example, we've got a nice large clock down here. And the first takeaway I've got from having used OpenSUSE for a little bit of time is that it's a really, really nice distro to use. The look and feel, the user experience is really good indeed. So for example, if I click on the home there to open up the Dolphin file browser, and you'll see it's just got a nice look and feel. And you'll notice there when I pick up a window and move it around, it becomes very slightly transparent, so you can see exactly where you're placing things. I'm not sure I'd keep that feature in the normal use, but it's very nicely implemented. Anyway, let's look in the menu and see what we've got uh, pre-installed. In fact, first we'll look at system settings, the settings for the KDE Plasma desktop, which is uh, always nice to use regardless of which distro you've got it running in, but it's a particularly nice implementation of uh, the KDE Plasma desktop here in uh, OpenSUSE. And uh, we can change things like themes. Here we're running the OpenSUSE theme. We could have, say, a, a dark theme like that. Well, that's rather wacky, isn't it, the, the dark theme? Let's go back to uh, OpenSUSE. We can change the uh, plasma style, as they call it. All sorts of settings available here, very nice to see. We can change the application style. Everything is configurable, lots and lots of user control. We can change colors and things in menus. We can change icons, etc. So if you want to really configure a Linux distro to work exactly as you want it, this is a great distro to pick. Let's have a look down in the menu at the applications which are pre-installed. There are some games. There's some board games, for example. You can play Reverse Eye here. There we are. Let's try a game of Reverse Eye. I can never remember how to play this thing, but it's something like that, isn't it? Over there, is it? I think. There we are. This could be an Olympic sport, couldn't it? Olympic sport played online. Where do I go next? Will it show me legal moves? Oh, I could go down there. That's exciting, isn't it? Anyway, we won't play this for forever, but uh, you get the principle. You can play Reverse Eye if you want to in uh, OpenSUSE straight out of the box. Also straight out of the box, we've got graphics programs here. Not that many. I did expect to find GIMP here. We could, of course, install it. But the reason I expected to find it is because the OpenSUSE image file is four gigabytes and there was about four and a half gigabytes of something else downloaded during installation. So I thought we might have a little bit more software than we've actually got here. Under internet, there are various things here as you would expect, including the Firefox browser. Firefox works. Oh look, a little jumping Firefox thing there. It's a nicer little touch. We can run the world's favorite website here in OpenSUSE. Also down in applications, we've got multimedia. Not a lot here. In fact, those just basically are VLC. Always good to have VLC, but it's rather lonely there at the moment. Under Office, pretty much what you'd expect. LibreOffice is here. Works very nicely. Nice and colorful there. We can type hello and we can make hello very large because of course it's the law to do that in any test of a, a distro. There we are. Let's get rid of that. Do we want to save it? No, we don't. Let's just check out the rest of the applications here. We've got uh, settings for various things. There is YAST, yet another setup tool. We'll look at that in the next segment of the video. Don't get too excited yet. Under system, various things here. Oh, here's the info center. This is nicely implemented. This shows you obviously the system. We're running OpenSUSE 15.2. We can see how it's going on with our memory, where it's slightly strange because we've got about a quarter of our memory used, 24% of available memory used, 75% free. 1% of the memory has gone off on holiday. It's on a secret mission maybe. What's happened to it? And we've got good information here, easily accessible on devices on the system, storage devices, processors, uh, USB devices, etc. Very easy to access that type of information. Finally here, what have I missed? Oh, we've got a few uh, utilities down there. Oh, we've got an emoji selector. We can uh, select emojis, which is very good. Recently, I've used that smiley face look. There must be more than that. Oh, look, there's loads and loads and loads of emojis in this system. Anyway, 
This is a OpenSUSE, a very, very nice to use distro. And it's probably worth pointing out it's running very well on this Celeron based system. And this is the same system I tested Linux Mint 20 on a few videos back. And OpenSUSE is running at least as well as a Linux Mint 20 on the same hardware. Right, I thought we'd now take a look at YAST or yet another setup tool, which is a key feature of a OpenSUSE. And you might remember we looked at a system settings in the last segment and there's lots of things here we can alter in the system settings, but down here in YAST we can do even more. And when we run it up, we have to put in our password. There we are, although we can do a remember password if we want, which is a nice touch to have. But anyway, I'll click OK on that. And here is YAST. And this is a really cool control center. It's really very nice to have this indeed. You can see at the top, we can do things like checking DVD media. We can do our online updates. We'll look at software management in a second. We can look at all the hardware on the system, control printers, scanners, that type of stuff. But we can also do things like, for example, configuring the bootloader, which is a really nice thing to have graphically available here. We can look at all the parameters for the bootloader, how it's going to run. That's very nice to have available. We can also uh, do all of our network settings down here. As you can see, we've got uh, our security settings, virtualization settings, miscellaneous settings, the settings no one can think what to call, but they're very useful to have. This, in some respects, reminds me of how all the different settings are brought together in a Linux Mint, but it's not as comprehensive as what you get here in a YAST. This really is a very good control center to see graphically in a, a Linux distro. Now, let's just look at software management. We could get to it from here, or you can also go down to the menu and you'll find it under Applications and System, where in fact YAST is listed twice. Uh, YAST for what we're looking at here, Administrator Settings and also the Software Manager. Let's launch it that way. Doesn't matter which way we launch it. There we are. And it's coming up here. Put it up on the screen like that. And this will hopefully give us access to install applications very, very easily. So for example, I could type in GIMP, the graphics package I wanted earlier, and do a search for that. And uh, there it is, it's come up at the top. All I've got to do is to click a little box and uh, click on Accept. It'll do that, there we are, continue, that's no problems at all. And hopefully that would now install GIMP. And uh, there we are, it's uh, finished. We can finish off there, let's keep things nice and tidy. And hopefully it's done its job. If we now look under uh, Graphics, we should find, yes, the GIMP image editor is now there, bounding away on the screen, that little fox, coming up on the system, YAS clearly did its job, and we proved it's very easy to install applications here in OpenSUSE. So, I just thought we'd take a look at another desktop in OpenSUSE. You've got a choice of seven when you install this operating system, so I thought we'd look at at least one more other than KDE Plasma. So uh, this is KDE Plasma, which we've been working in so far, but uh, this is the Enlightenment desktop. And it was this Enlightenment desktop running in OpenSUSE on a Raspberry Pi that got me interested in this uh, distro in the first place. And uh, this, I think, is a really wacky desktop. I've even added a few gadgets for a clock and some CPU temperature monitoring just to make it look uh, really wacky. It's a uh, slightly experimental compared to some of the others you can use. The uh, trash can here seems to have uh, crashed on me and I can't run it up without that crashing on me. But uh, other than that, things are working absolutely fine. Uh, I love the fact that the icons here are so, are so retro. We've got the terminology terminal there, which just uh, it's just beautifully done this. It's a really distinct operating system. The clock is great. I love the, the speaker there for the, the analog mixer, which is fantastic. Bluetooth has a standard symbol, but everything else has got really, really lovely symbols. That's the symbol for controlling the, the brightness of the display. And the menu is down here, exactly the same applications we had before, except they're being accessed from a, a different menu. We've just got a different desktop on top of the same Linux distro. And to get hold of this, all I had to do was to go to this web page here, which is the Enlightenment page on the OpenSUSE website, and I could do a direct install there. And uh, yes, took care of the whole thing very straightforwardly. And once it was installed, when I logged in, I simply had to select the Enlightenment desktop rather than the KDE Plasma desktop. So there we are. I just thought we'd take a look at that 
And I think I'm now going to go back to uh, games, I think applications and games and uh, good old reverse eye. So I think I'll put in some practice for 2021 where this may well be an Olympic sport and we'll move towards the conclusions of this video. OpenSUSE is a beautiful Linux distro, which I'd be very happy to use as my daily driver. However, I'm unlikely to do that, and that's not a reflection on OpenSUSE, it's because there are so many great Linux distros available. Personally, right now I use Linux Mint as my daily driver, and if I was going to move from Linux Mint, I would probably go to Ubuntu 20.04, soon to be Ubuntu 2010, which I was very impressed with when it came out. And if I wasn't going to go to Ubuntu, I'd probably go to Zorin OS, or also really like Zorin OS. And I do worry that Linux doesn't do itself any favours by having so many great distros, and having many, many distros that could easily run other desktops, as we've seen in this video. It makes it gives us great choice. It's fantastic to see that flexibility. I like the fact we can choose to use different distros according to our wishes. We can change the desktops. That's all very good, but it doesn't help Linux get a greater market share in the consumer in end user computing. And that is, I think, problematic because I would like more and more people to use Linux because if they did, software support would get better and better. And I don't know what the answer is to this, because ultimately I like the fact people have got flexibility and choice with Linux, that's a great thing. But I'd also like to see standardization and more people using a Linux operating system. So the current situation I do sometimes find rather sad. Anyway, I don't want to end on a negative, so I'll end on a positive, which is that OpenSUSE is a beautiful Linux distro. But uh, now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.